Okay, so each, each, um, all the artists here were picked by certain galleries all over the City of the Sky Arts Consortium, with the exception of Keith Chaplin, who's a local Bowen artist, who isn't a free artist, but was jury in with the Hearts Gallery for this show, because he thought he could be on there. So each artist works in a different medium. We were gone through, went up to Squamish, and we were presented with a burlap bag tied it. We had no idea what we were getting. We knew we were getting a hundred and something of the same thing. And then there was a big grab out thing. So it was always, a, it was like a random pick a number kind of thing. So it's like, hi, here's your stash, go. And so um, I'll talk you through every, every piece here. So we had a few months to work on this and um, and it's, this is a show about art activism. Yeah. And art activism comes in many forms. I think any time a, a, a singer or a dancer has the courage to say something, that's art activism. And hopefully the art activis activism transfers into regular people on the street activism. It's about engaging the community, engaging the individual to say, I can participate and I can do something to help help the oceans, help the, the land, help humanity. That's what really this is all about. So I'll walk through here, and so this is Monica Gerwitz, who is a scientist. So uh, it's SOS, Save Our Seas and Sirens. So it's very much about um, how you're drawn into the lore and the beauty, and then it tells a huge story um, about culture and how we use our stuff. And there's two kinds of debris. There is intentional debris, which is cans, trash, plastic lids, whatever, that people are just like, whatever, this is not my responsibility and they toss it. There is unintentional debris in this show as well. Eyeglasses, cell phones, boat oars, um, lures from fishing. So there's that kind of, and of course, unintentional debris is human error. So she has a whole story that she's created. She was given the orders. Here is um, Carrie Lopes. And Carrie's exquisite. I mean, there's so many different mediums from photography to paint to an application. Fishing lures hand dipped into paint and oil application. So her, her work is infused with water and movement already, and she recreated the ocean floors with floors and um, eyeglass lenses, as well as other applications of, you know, there's a toy boat, and, and here's the um, arms of the, the glasses. And here is her husband, Paulo Lopes. He was given uh, beer cans. He automatically went into pirate. It just kind of... You know, as artists, we, you know, it's, it is enough to tell work from, work from uh, this one uh, mandate of art activism. But many artists, we need to have a visual story that's a subtext that makes it interesting for the artist to create. It makes it, gives it more depth, and hopefully that transcends to the viewer. So Paulo went to Skull and Crossbones of the Pirate Flag, the debauchery, and the debauchery of destroying the ocean and water. This piece is done by Karen Yama Rich. I hope I pronounce her last name right. She is a, a fashion a designer, upscale fashion, eco fashion designer. And she was also given eyeglasses. Her um, Let's Raven Talk, Let the Ravens Talk. The raven is in the tree. It's 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 you know, raven is a very spiritual being, and specifically uh, you know, not specific to the Pacific North, though, but certainly for this region. And she created this amazing piece. And you can see she is a great amount of color, texture. This piece here, Ghost Nest, I'm quickly going through, I just want you to, you know, yeah. have time. Ghost Nest is by Kathy's, Kathy's given beer pet cans. 
she deconstructed the beer cans. Like all of us are deconstructing what we got to to reinvent it to a to for a medium. So Kath, very painstakingly and I'm sure very painful, made these nets. Net net fishing is so such a destructive force to the habitat to the coral beds. Here we have glass coral. Yeah, and no sound that we're trying to protect. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get rid of this can't grab or fish in certain areas. We have glass girls thousands of years old, mm -hmm. and it's gone in seconds. Mm -hmm. And mass uh, fishing with nets, you know how destructive that is. Well, and then even just the nets. The nets alone the nets fall into the ocean, ocean and then get cut, you know, the birds and the fish that they can't eat anymore, or they, they can't swim anymore. Keith Chaplin, is, it speaks on his own. It's in the, he is a you know, multidisciplinary artist on island. He also does a lot of photography of decay with um, uh, usage, you know, useful stuff. And so this is some of his photographs of the island. This he and his daughter, Matilda, I believe, help curate this. The fish on the floor I made, which I'll speak to. This is, I've been collecting debris, going to two of the dives. These dives all over the house now. The divers all volunteer. They all, it's on their dive. Sometimes there's barges, sometimes they're just big bags to haul things up in. And then out volunteers ledger every piece of debris that comes out of these waters is written down. Completely, because this is scientific study as well. Weight and then um, responsibility. So, he's just an interaction. So, he's a lot of it's, uh, it's about perception as well, because you're looking at this fish and you're dealing with making these assemblage. And also, Keith's background has an animation background as a artist. And you can add things and play. And, and, but you're looking at the fish and creating upside down, which is about how to think differently. Um, over here in the corner, so beautiful. This is very elegant. Uh, Arnie Gutman was given cans. He cut each one, placed them. It's luminescent, you know, and uh, architectural. He's calling it the Silvery Seas. Over here is a uncle and niece. Uh, this is thank you, but I don't need goggles. So Michael Brinkley and Olivia Richardson. Michael Brinkley is a stone sculpture. He carves, and he was given obviously golf balls to create the ocean floor. And also, like I said, we were given the choice if you can use other debris as well. So this is mind blowing. How beautiful this is. He cut the oars up, he created the octopus, uh, the sea kelp bed, and then of course he has the goggles and, and, and also embellished with our a very own film. Was all the trash from here, from House Sound or, yes. or Vancouver? Yes. Okay. Yes, all of it. All of it was collected, you know, through the years. It started with the idea with um, and um, I'm trying to think of the eighties last name. There are divers, there's divers that do this. There's, there are a group of divers. We have divers on island um, as well that join this group. Adam Taylor has his uh, the, a whole bunch of divers. They just meet up. It's fun for them yeah. as well as doing something yeah. really great. And so uh, Henry and Amy came up with this idea. It's like, wouldn't it be cool? You know, they're hauling this. If we gave this to artists and see what they can create, and it was started with just, and they were like, okay, and so they got sponsorship. They put the word out to all the galleries in the Sea to Sky Consortium. Okay, I'll talk to you about my thing, which I, I, my head's all full of ideas, and I'm usually very messy. I'm a costume designer and a puppeteer by trade, so um, I wanted to 
making it up because I usually work with the script. So I made a script to it by not saying, okay, um, first of all, backstory is my mother-in-law is blind from diabetes and my father-in-law is an optometrist. So I thought, of course I was given eyeglasses, of course. How random, but of course. So it immediately got me home to thinking about the, you know, what is home in my, my parents, and they're my in-laws, but I've known them for since I was a teenager. So I'm, I'm kind of conjuring my mother-in-law. I was her voice to see things in color and shape. So I knew I wanted it very tactile and touchable because I know people without sight need to experience on their own. And then I would describe color. So I was conjuring her and I sew. I didn't want to really use a lot of glue. I wanted to keep it as ecologically friendly as possible. So I took fishing line and I made a story, what if we don't clean up our waters? What would happen to our animals? The DNA will change through the poisons and so I have morphed animals. And what if they all die out, which it came to fruition. In Alaska, there's no more crab. We got the word, the news came out. There's no more Alaskan crab for this year. Crabbing is over. It came out in the news two weeks ago. So it's, it could happen. So I went all over and I said, a fish beaver. And um, here is uh, sort of like this giant crustacean, like a crawdaddy, which are usually normal. Um, here is a lobster, and here's a giant seahorse. I wanted to, I call them the sea being series, S-E-E -E as a plan word, but it's very important for me about the activism is that you see it, you pick it up, you engage with it, and you be responsible. Uh, I also am dealing with seeing is how we use glasses. We need to see, we, you know, I do. It was astounding to me how much Congress was on the garage floor, thousands of dollars worth of, whether it was drugstore glasses, dollar store to $500 frames, it all became trash that was worth nothing. It, and, and, and the commerce of going to a doctor, right? And even though it's unintentional, it makes a very intentional destruction. And um, so I did this saying, okay, I'm making these sea pink specimens. The only way we can see the animals is if, if we go to a museum and we pull it out in a drawer. So I work very graphically, flat and graphic. And I I'll research what would happen if I found an animal. And if you find an animal and you want to take it to the museum, you have to learn how to tag and identify it. So you do the genius, you do the family, you do the longitude and latitude. And that's how animals uh, are are tagged so we understand them and learn from them of their history. So I kind of morph the genius with them. And then each number, I was doing with home, because this is my new home. I'm from Los Angeles. I moved here to Bonn four years ago after visiting 15 years. So it's, I've been working on a sense of home. And uh, home, yeah, that's not right. home is a state of mind. And home is everywhere. And so I used all the homes I lived in. All of these are, this is the address I moved from, 823 South Cities Avenue. This is 8306 was my apartment when I first got married to my husband. Um, 4263 is my very first home of my childhood. And 310 is where I live now. That's great. So I combined a sense of home and we all belong. There's no, for me, the waters and the land, natural state. There's no walls, there's no ceilings. It all, home is everywhere to everybody. So that was my story. I made for this. And as I sewed, knotted, because everything is hand drilled, 
You take a stitch, you knot it. It's very, very methodical. It takes a really, really long time to do this months of work. I thought of my my family and my homes. So I this is what really gave me joy. And this is my first exhibit. I my my work is usually on the screen or the theater. So I feel very touched that I was invited and I learned so much by doing this. I was asked to teach um, young art students at, on the high schools in West Van. I did Zooms and I did workshops. And to teach the youth how they can participate and how they are enough as creative people and thinkers because they're inheriting all this, right? And it's quite overwhelming. They're inheriting this. And I said, you, you're enough, and any time you have something to say or something to make and put it out in the world, do it. Because it's going to, be, it's going to affect somebody, and it's going to evoke change. And that is what this whole show is about. I forgot to tell you about Sarah Haxley's piece right here. This is so dramatic. I, Sarah is a Bowen artist as well. She couldn't go out to Squamish, and she had me pick up her stuff. So I'm delivering it to her house. She lives right around the corner. And it made this beautiful sound like, <laughs> I was like, oh, what is this? And we opened it up, and it's a hundred, over a hundred bullet pieces. And I was like, I, I literally went, like people actually shoot their guns into the ocean or they're hunting and the casings go into the rivers because a lot of this also can go into a river and a stream and out to the ocean or stay. They also clean up lakes and rivers. And we were, we were shaking. And I didn't even know what this was. I've never like shot a gun. And Sarah said, oh, these are bullet casings. I was like, and she automatically, automatically, automatically thought, I know what to do with this. So her piece is about what we do in terms of hunting and destruction. Her piece is about making a trophy, how we kill animals and we actually make trophies that it's a good thing. And this is very much like a trophy piece that you would hang on a wall, you see hanging on the walls so that they catch, you know, this is it. Uh, out of any animal. So it's uh, casings that she found a knife. It's on a reused piece of uh, old door. And it's applied with resin, again, plastics and chemicals that kill the water. It's very dramatic. Sarah Haxby. So I, I thank you. You involve yourselves, but this is the story of it.